most people are perverted. Absolutely. <laughs> In every sense of the word. You watch too much porno. You play too many video games. Man. You toss too many salads. You eat too many cookies. And you make too many damn excuses. Hey. The greatest American alive. It's my position that the perverted father is destroying America because they're, ra they're raising their kids with their own perverted ideology. Yes, when I uh, say perverted, I, just, I don't mean just sexual. This nigga figure told me the other day, kids do not or should not have to learn anything after they come from school. <laughs> <laughs> so after they leave the schoolhouse for eight hours, the parents shouldn't have to do nothing. The state is supposed to raise my baby. Right now in America, <laughs> parenting is a luxury that we can't afford. It, huh. it, it takes too much time, huh? Yeah. It's too expensive, huh? Man. To be a daddy in America. Too expensive. That's a perverted ideology. So we blame it on baby mama, but like what kind of baby daddy is you? What kind of father are you? Like that's the question that I think that the men in America have to ask right now and to hold ourselves accountable is what kind of father am I? And like a few years ago, man, I was a horrible father. Like when I first got divorced, I had no idea how to deal with the separation from my children and my ex-wife. I was lost. And I found myself in the in the bottom of a, a bottle every day. Like most day. of us do. Like I was trying to drink my troubles away and they just started just compiling and compiling. And I didn't have anywhere to go to have an honest conversation on how to navigate this pain. Everyone around could just say, be a man. What does that mean? I mean, that's a perverse ass ideology. I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> in a time where we can't even define what a man or a woman is, what does being a man mean? That's like the most important question that we can ask right now. Is because if if it's not my sexual like if it's not based on my penis and my testicles, <laughs> like if that's not the starting place of being a man, then where are we finna start at? Your thoughts on me make me a man. Man. What you think about me makes me a man. Mm. <laughs> and so if I don't stack up to your idea of what a man is, then I, I'm less than. Yeah. And I think that's a crazy ass place to be at because like that creates pressure. I know every time I have a conversation with men, they start talking about the pressure of being a man without actually having a, a definition for what a man is or how to behave. So how do they have a problem with something that they don't know what it is? Bill Cosby is on the thumbnail for one specific reason. We learn how to be a father from the media. Absolutely. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> we got a television daddy. <laughs> yeah. So whatever he say is is automatically law. Man, I got my I got my sweater on just to be like Heathcliff Hostable. <laughs> <laughs> My kids play chess just because I've seen Heathcliff and Theo play chess. And so we play chess and swear, wear sweaters, huh? Yeah. I got my parenting skills from the goddamn mm -hmm. television screen. Yeah, How yeah, about that? And I don't even understand. If that's the case, then why don't we see family as a good thing? Because we saw how hard it was. We saw how hard it was for so my So it, it's not about uh, uh, building something with, with a family. It's, it's more about I don't want to do the work. Man, that, it's hard. I know, it's, but it's hard. Everything is hard. Right now with social media, like we get everything we want whenever we want it. If I want to feel good. Right I, now, yeah. I can, I can make a, an explicit post and somebody's going to like that explicit ass post. Like that's the, that's the society that we live in right now. We get instant gratification yeah. all the time. People, tra people transition that instant gratification in all factors of life. I want this kind of woman. I want this kind of man. I want this, this, and this. But what we're missing is... What if you ain't the type of person that anybody wants? I have friends right now, males and females right now, who are over 30 years old. And if the person they meet don't meet all the criteria, one, yeah. two, three, four. They the problem. They'll push them away. Yeah. And these are the most loneliest people I've ever met in my yeah. entire life. And they're pushing away love. They're not even, like, you have to love a person through their faults. It's that double standard of having expectations on other people. But not having those same expectations on yourself. I had I had a partner, and the person said, "Man, I just love how in, in shape you are," and refused to do the work, and just be like, "No, nah, baby, you're doing good. <laughs> you're doing so I, I'm, good." I'm gonna clap for you over here. Yeah, at the highs, don't eating you, donuts. Don't you think I want the same uh, experience? Yeah. Like, I want it uh, in shape. I'm not in shape right now. Don't get mad at me, but I try. You know what I mean? I walk five miles a day. Tell the truth. I mean, about. if you get it, give it a good, hard try. That's what matters. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people out here that don't even want to try. It's 1% better every single day. Yeah. Shout out to Sean Cannell. Absolutely. That's our boy. <laughs> And so when, when I talk about Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby was a character of creation. Mm -hmm. You're a real father. And so when I start to hold myself accountable for my own children and my own behavior, and now we're having conversations on what it means to be a healthy person, being a good person, being a responsible and accountable person, these things are basic human qualities. That's why none, nothing works because people don't want to work. You have two beautiful daughters, yes. Absolutely. When you want them to do something good and it's hard, there's a lot of pushback, ain't it? Hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I got to get out here and get it. 
I think the two most important characteristics of a father are guidance and discipline. Mm -hmm. It's my job to help you become the best you possible. Absolutely. You should feel like a failure if you're not doing as such. I listened specifically to the, to, uh, to the Dwayne Wade interview uh, when he talked about his child. In that interview, he said that he listened to his child's ideas and decided to step back and believe his child. Whoa, 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 whoa. How does the child lead the parent? You're supposed to be guiding your child and your child came to you and said, dad, I know what's best for me and this is how I want to live my oh, life. No. And so you're going to allow me, I want to eat candy all day, every day and go to bed at 1030 because that's what I feel like I want to do and I'm just supposed to indulge. No, it don't work like that, man. When did it become okay to, to allow our children to lead us? When do we get to that place? It's the most hottest subject in America right now is to talk about sexuality. What I said about candy and a bedtime, that sounds absurd, right? But if I say, if a child comes to me and says, daddy, I'm not a son, I'm your daughter. I'm just supposed to be like, oh, oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. And support yeah. that wholeheartedly. What kind of person am I to ignore an objective reality? And then on the other side of that, in the public schools, they're not even, if your kid goes to them first, yes, they're not even obligated to tell you anything. Like the importance of this conversation is a father is being a hands-on person to guide and discipline your child. This is your responsibility. And anything other than that is a perverted ideology. I have to be a better father every single day, for, not only for myself, but for my community, because it starts with me. I can't yeah. blame no government. I can't blame no church. I can't blame my parents. I have to hold myself accountable for yeah. my behavior. I, I want to be, I want to be a better, I don't want to be a bad dad. Me neither. I want to be a good dad. I was a bad dad myself. I mean, unattentive, not teaching them anything, just, just living my own life. And a lot of us parents these days, they want to live their best life and they forgetting about their kids. But I'm like, when did it become okay to throw our kids to the wolves? My children are my best life. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. They should be. They challenge me in ways that I didn't know I should be challenged. Absolutely. They challenge my patience. That's that work. <laughs> That's that work. Man, it'll help you become who you, uh, bit, like you say, that better person. I made them. Yeah. How dare I make some children and say, uh... I don't want to be responsible for you guys. And most of the things that we don't like about our kids are the things that they learn directly from us. They watch us do it. And we watch our faults and our children get mad and at them. And they get mad. <laughs> don't sit your damn son. Man, come on, man. How dare you be just like me? <laughs> then we say it's their fault. It's the kids' fault. This is perversion. Man. Being perverted is to yeah. deviate from reality. And yeah. reality is that if you have a child, you are a father. And if you have a child and you're a female, you are a mother. And it's our duty and responsibility to take care of our children. Because nobody told you or asked you to bring them into this world. Who else do they have to depend on? Sex is wonderful. Absolutely. Maybe. Responsibly, it's even better. Absolutely. <laughs> and I can't tell nobody to go get married and say, nah. I don't need the state in my relationship, but you should actually have a, a real relationship. <laughs> <laughs> know they name or something. Goodness gracious. Huh? Yeah. I decided to have standards in my dating life, right? And so I, I said that every woman I'm dating needs to have both of her biological parents still in a, a marriage, a, a committed marriage. That, that that makes sense, but that's kind of dangerous because then that goes into preference, and people don't like preference. Man, this woman <laughs> this woman got so mad at me. This woman started attacking me. How dare you? The nope. way you're behaving right now is the reason why I don't want to entertain that. Absolutely. You're rebellious. Yeah. You're argumentative. And how can you have a healthy relationship in, with a toxic person? You can't. And most of the time, the people who are saying they are talking about toxic are the toxic ones. Specifically, fathers are perverted. We can't control our tally records sometimes. I know that me not being able to control my tally record got me in a whole heap of trouble a bunch of times. Yeah. Just run, just run around chasing my dick. <laughs> Man, you can't think straight because you so horny. You just want to hump I'm on so anything. so horny. <laughs> Me love you long time. Long time. My time and era. There was a song on the Cameron album. He said, when I meet a woman, I just walk up and just smack her. He said, I just smack her. He said, why you smack her, Cam? So she don't never say, you don't treat me like you used to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not glamorizing domestic violence. That's horrible. We say, oh, it's just music. Now that's more than music. That's brainwashing on the highest level. Absolutely. That's brainwashing to a beat. Because mm -hmm. somebody going to go out there and really do that. Just smack them. They going to really smack them. <laughs> yeah. This is horrible. This is a ter terrible thing. It's not a laughing matter, right? When you start diving into the type of media that you consume mm -hmm. and how you respond to that media, and then you can understand your behavior. I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't listen to music that says to slap her down. Yes. This is true. But a lot of people don't associate the music that they listen to with the life that they live because they think they can just separate the two but, that, that, that's like obese people saying 
Just because I eat fast food three times a day, it ain't finna make me obese. Oh, okay. This food ain't got nothing to do with the way that I look. But look at you. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what is it then? It's a perverted ideology. Man. It's deviating from what the standard is. You Man. know you ain't supposed to be eating no god dog on greasy food three times a day. This is a fact. We you know this. feel it. Yeah. You can feel it in your ankles. Yeah. You can feel it in your knees. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a gut. Man. I can feel it in the small of my back. You hear yeah, me? I'm trying to tell you. I be having <laughs> chest pains and all kind of stuff when I be eating that stuff. So, yeah. When I say perverted fathers are destroying America, I'm saying that we have no discipline. We have no guidance. And we're allowing our children to just do whatever. Yeah. And so we're fat. We're hypersexualized. And we're emotionally deprived because I'm not loving my children the way that I should. I'm not hugging my sons. I'm not having intimate conversations with my daughter about her sexuality. Taking my hands off and say, hey, do what yeah. you do. Just if watch you, my shoes. If, if you're not cool with who you are as a person, there's no way you can teach your kids how to do the same. We have to work on ourselves. It starts with that man in the mirror like my boy Michael say. I'm talking to the man in the mirror. Oh, yeah. So we need to get to that first because you can't teach your kids nothing that you don't know yourself. But so, this is like a journey, though. It's like a learning experience. Absolutely. And having conversations with men like you, it helps me to grow. Or you could tell me, hey, uh, that's not okay. Yeah. And it, it, like you said, it's good. You're being a bad dad. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. It's good to have people, uh, some honest people around you who's going to tell you these type of things. Because if you just got yes men around you, they ain't telling you nothing. And they're going to have you doing stupid stuff. Those are the scariest people in the world. People who will watch you fail. Oh, yeah. And then laugh at you while you fall. Yeah. Why would you do that stupid ass thing? I was like, man, when I was going through it, why didn't you just like just say, hey, that's, you a, that's a bad idea. You could have deterred me somehow. Damn, you're supposed to be my partner. We're supposed to be working together. We're supposed to be building a community. Like, if I can't look out for you and you can't trust me around your daughters and I can't trust my sons around you, how can we build anything? No. You got to have trust in order to build. Ain't nothing going on if you're not, if the person that you're dealing with is not trustworthy or they say things that they don't mean or do things they don't say or. Ego can keep us isolated. And that's specifically for men. And as a black man, I see that a lot in the black community. Ego and wanting to be the top of the mountain keeps us from working together and have a collective unit. And that's so frustrating because black dads have to support dads. I mean, dads in general have to support dads. This is the importance of black content creators. This is important to black male father content creators. Uh, Bill Cosby can't save us. We found out that he had a whole different ideology than I have. I'm not here to condemn Bill Cosby. I'm here to look at the, the stories that I was told were bad stories. And I want to tell better stories. I want to tell stories about actual fathers who are doing the work to raise their children. Like you and I. And to be honest, Bill Cosby never represented me. It was kind of far-fetched. Me being so excited to see black representation on television, like that was there. Yeah. And he was larger than life. That's what it seemed like to me. It was it was it was larger than life. Black success, man. Yeah. yeah. Cause doctor, lawyer, uh, two story house, all of that was that was like what they call the American dream. And that was kind of far fetched for me at the time. But I do understand representation of a black family and all of that. So I've heard black men push back against the Bill Cosby show, but I really like that that to highlight black excellence. Yeah. I know that it seems so crazy, but most of the shows that they show to white people that cater to their demographic or to other demographics, it's far-fetched also. The majority of those people don't live like that. They show them the best version of themselves, mm, and yeah. they aspire to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. I want us to, uh, to aspire to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah, it would, I guess that's a, that's a good uh, positive out of the, the show. Yeah, not, but not taking cookies. Taking cookies is bad. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself, you hear me? <laughs> Don't hey, slip that, that goes what I was saying. <laughs> that goes what I was saying. You shouldn't what? be slipping nothing in nobody drink. It shouldn't be waking up talking about, oh, what happened? But it doesn't, though. Like, we think common sense is common, but it ain't. I did. Well, I've grown to know <laughs> these days common sense is not not prevalent these days. <laughs> Bill Cosby thought that was a good idea. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. The people around him thought it was a good idea, too. Dwayne Wade thought letting his son... Uh, oh, excuse me. Dwayne Wade thought letting his child... You gotta be politically correct. <laughs> Dwayne Wade thought letting his child run him was a good idea. I don't understand how you could let a child make a grown decision. LeBron, why you ain't call your homie, dog? That's because LeBron a hoe, too. Oh! They all in it together. They all in it. <laughs> they all supported by the same people. I, I'm, I'm all for you getting money however, right? But when my voice is controlled by the people I work for, that's really hard, that's, okay? That, that's a difficult thing. Because you really can't stand for nothing. I work for Nike, so I can't say this. Yeah. I work for the NBA, so I can't say yeah. that. 
these men are very important because they were the richest people in our community. But they're so out of touch with our actual lives. Because they are the richest people in our community. And they and they answer to people who are richer than them. <laughs> so we can't win with them. It's easy to demonize social media. But if we use social media in a powerful way, it can be a great tool. But for black men, for fathers in America, articulate yourself in a way that's entertaining and tell your story about being a father and about setting guidelines and how you raise your kids. That's really useful information. I know a lot of men are searching for that information. Absolutely. Especially now today that it, it, so much information is what they call misinformation. I know the majority of fathers in America want their kids to be the best version of themselves. They don't want to try to lead them down hypersexuality. They don't want them perpetually scrolling on a phone. They know that stuff is unhealthy. And so if we support each other to, to raise our kids in a more better way, oh my God, this is two black fathers. I want my three sons and, and, my, and my nieces to be the best young people in america to me that's important and and i'm not leaving that to no school i'm not blaming baby mama it's my responsibility yeah you can always do your part in 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 everything that happens uh in your children's life because like i said i'm not gonna let nobody be more of an influence over my children than i am they're not the school system and they're definitely not gonna be making excuses as to why they can't do what they trying to do your hard work has provided the opportunity for your daughters to be homeschooled. That's you right. a black working man and your daughters are homeschooled by yep. your loving wife. Yes, sir. I got to get out there and get it. If nobody, And that's the benefit of having a family. See, I don't need a wife who is out here making six figures. That's not a value to me. My value is having... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. That wouldn't be nice. It, I didn't say it wasn't. Y'all still working together, though. Yeah, Just, yeah. It would be nice if, if she, she, if she, if she was, six figures. That would be nice. <laughs> but... That is not money is not the value to me in our relationship. I understand. Yeah, I'm that, just saying. <laughs> I want the six figures to come. That's all I I'm do, saying. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that goes without saying. It's about to hit. It's about to come. But uh, yeah, jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> that's not in the beginning. That's not what I value most from her. I need someone who is going to teach my children our values so I don't have to worry about that school system or the government or anybody else uh, being more influential over their lives and their decisions. You guys share values. And so since you share values, when this money comes, oh my goodness, It's just going to be so much better. You're going to enjoy it in a responsible, non-perverted way. (laughs) This is true. (laughs) This is true because we ain't perverted right now. So, yeah. Nannies ain't finna raise my babies. I don't need nobody. I don't let people watch my kids now. Because most people are perverted. Absolutely. <laughs> In every sense of the word. You watch too much porno. You play too many video games. Man. You toss too many salads. You eat too many cookies. And you make too many damn excuses. Hey, that's a perverted ideology, man. man. Better stop playing with yourself. That's called jacking off. What's up? <laughs> 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 man, y'all out here masturbating, man. God, uh, tell the truth and get some power, my brother. This is true. <laughs> Can't be out here lying your whole life, man. You got to keep up with them lies. Brandon Stalker, the official Stalker family. You better tune into his YouTube channel, like and subscribe. They're doing wonderful things as a black father building, and that's what we're talking about. Me and my wife Camille, which is his sister. That's called community. Absolutely. And that's where it starts at. In the family. Be a person of character and integrity, man. And you can work with anybody. You know, be matter. the greatest American alive, man. Yes, indeed. <laughs> the greatest American alive. 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 The greatest American alive.